name, sir, and who are you with? Uh, Patrick Davis with the Houston Fire Department. And your Texas Brotherhood ride today? Yes, sir, with the Texas Brotherhood ride. Tell me a little about this ride, what brought this together? And so what it, what this ride it? started from a, a group of firefighters in Florida. Uh, the Charleston Nine firefighters died, and a group from Florida rode nine days for nine heroes. And from there it became the, the Brotherhood ride. Uh, we got in touch with the, the Brotherhood ride from Florida, and we formed our own chapter, and we're the Texas Brotherhood ride. So we try to ride for fallen first responders through the Texas, and we've ridden for fallen firefighters and police officers in Texas and Louisiana. Try to keep it in this, this area. Quite a few of you guys going out here today. Right, so we've got numerous agencies, uh, Houston Fire, Taylor Fire, uh, Missouri City Fire. Uh, we've got Baton Rouge police officers, Baton Rouge Sheriff's officers. We've got them from all over, uh, North and South Carolina and also in Florida. We, but we like to think about it, it doesn't really matter where we're from, it's one team and one mission. And that's to honor the fallen. What about uh, starting up here in San Jacinto County? You got a long ride. You got what uh, here down the floor, down to? Today's a, a 62 day mile ride. Um, it's a little different than what we're used to. Uh, meeting in the morning, usually we're used to starting and we're, we're going several days in a row, but you know, due to the circumstances of this year, today will be 62 miles. Then we have a group riding in Baton Rouge tomorrow. Uh, they're going to be doing 80 ish miles, and I think we'll be back again here in the Houston area. Tuesday, we're going to Freeport. Uh, Thursday will be uh, Wednesday and Thursday we'll be back in Baton Rouge, Friday back in Houston, and then next Sunday we'll be in uh, Central Texas. And then I forgot uh, yesterday they had a ride in Florida that is all part of this ride. So we're doing the best we can under the circumstances, but we want to make sure that these names are the honors given to these names throughout, you know, as far as we can spread it. Kind of tough when these family members uh, meeting and finally after this, isn't it? It is. It is. But you know what? Uh, the more you can talk about things, the more you can heal, and we just want to be another support for the family to let them know that, you know, we may not have known uh, your son or daughter, but uh, you're part of our family now because it's a first responder family and, you know, they're welcome to our family. Today is uh, Deputy Brian Pfluger. Uh, he was a sheriff's deputy out here. Uh, I never had the, the honor of meeting him. But just uh, so I had to look him up on the end of watch for so he was uh, he was killed December 21st, 2019, in a traffic accident while responding to a burglary call here. But if you read his end of watch, talking about his service, he served with the Taylor County Deputy Sheriffs. He was in the U.S. National Army Guard, and he was uh, described as being a rising star in this this police department. That kind of embodies service of what you know we're all here for. So his, his dad and his mom are here, or his dad and mom is here, I think. Uh, let's just show him some respect. Uh, I think he would fit in a group like this very well. And let's talk to each other on the way out here, because if you look, Leslie and, and Rob, you know, they've been touched by losses. I mean, we're all touched by them. But personally, they knew these guys. We talk about this stuff. As we talk, we heal. So let's use this ride not only to show honor for those, but let's let's heal ourselves too. And let's enjoy the day. Uh, senior Captain Kevin Liego, he was my senior captain. Uh, unfortunately this year, I've had the uh, honor and the sadness of speaking two eulogies for two firefighters I care a lot about. Um, I spoke at uh, Captain Liego's service. Captain Liego was in the fire department for about 16 years. He leaves behind a wife, uh, Breck, and a five-year-old daughter, uh, Kenzie. Um, crazy thing about Kevin was when he was an EO, he got in an accident about five years ago um, in a medic. They took him in, they did an MRI on him, and they found he had pancreatic cancer and he survived that. Um, and then after he survived, he went on to promote through junior captain to senior captain. Um, and then he got diagnosed with liver cancer. And throughout his chemotherapy, he was off for a while. He, uh, he continued to work. He came to work when he was super weak, um, but he loved the job. He really loved it. In fact, the last time he worked at the station, or one of the last times he worked, 
He was taken out on Medic 29. Uh, heart palpitations, all the chemotherapy, all the everything he went through, uh, he had to be carried out of the station. That's the kind of firefighter he was. Um, he told horrible dad jokes. <laughs> they were really bad. Um, he really cared for his crew. He stood up for us, was what you want from a captain. And I, I feel like he stood on the right side of things. Um, one thing I always said, one, one point I said about him was he respected everyone. Uh, whether or not he knew you or not, he showed you respect. And every time someone called the station, no matter who it was, or if you spoke to him, after he was done talking to you, he always said, I appreciate you. Appreciate you. It was his, his sign off and everything. So um, I know he would say right now that he appreciates every one of you being here, honoring him. I appreciate every one of you, and uh, it means a lot to me. And I know Kevin's looking down on us. Uh, we're going to meet his wife, uh, Breck, at the end of this ride, and I really appreciate every one of you. Thank you. Started as a firefighter at 19. He was, where's Chase? He was our classmate. He came in with us. Um, He passed away last year. He was 36. Very young. Same age as me. Very young. Very young. <laughs> <laughs> um, he was like, man, if you saw him in person, you just stared at him because he was like six foot eight, super athletic looking, uh, intimidating, like, you know, when you first see him, but this definition of a jungle giant. Um, he worked for a printing company for 16 years and then he got laid off. And then his wife Jessica, who he's been with since 2005, just the two of them, no children or anything. Um, she had brought home a magazine about HFD hiring. And he told her that he, he was gonna join the fire department. And he went all in, she supported him. She actually enrolled in the same EMT class as him just to help him. It wasn't so she could get a certificate for herself. It was to help him. She did, I mean, the most. She would come home when he was tired, make him study, quiz him. She's still, you know, of course, it takes so so long to get over something like that. It, it, you never do. Um, but he was someone that, you know, worked hard. He had a great work ethic. Uh, he loved what he did, and it was like he was meant for it. Uh, when we were at the academy, him with his size, the instructors would always just be in awe of him because when he would go up a ladder, it wouldn't even move. And everyone else was like bouncing around in the ladder, and he was just, it was like he was just made for this job. And um, like I said, he loved it. Um, he loved his wife and his family, and it was very unexpected, sudden. safe on this ride. Pray for your protection. Just bless those families that we honor today and uh, just uh, let us be a light to those that we uh, see us riding for that maybe we can brighten their day. Thank you uh, for giving us this opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Right, but this is also for us, so y'all say hi to everybody. Make right. friends between the riders, support, stuff y'all meet new people i mean for us that's been doing it for a while you know we've had made lifetime friends because of this so y'all spread the emails and all that kind of stuff but i want to express thank you for putting up with us for having the patience to carry this out y'all know it's been a crazy year for all of us uh this this ride it, if y'all knew the logistics that it takes to put the ride on but this year has been crazy as y'all imagine as y'all can imagine uh, so, from from all of us, I know me, Clemente especially, but thank y'all for putting up with us and the patience. 
Um, when we get frustrated, just hit him in the head for something. Uh, yeah, then you gotta break that kind of window little? before it <laughs> hit me though. Um, three, we started off, uh, we're honoring 17 throughout, uh, throughout Texas, which as we know is not everybody in Texas, but logistically that's, that's always gonna be unfortunately probably one of our problems to honor everybody that died in the line of duty. Uh, but that's logistically that, that's what it is. This year is even harder, as y'all know. So we're honoring the seven here in Houston with the three Houston rides. Uh, and the routes were, this is why we're meeting here and we're finishing over here, over because the routes are made to hit all the spots and agencies of where who we're riding for in Houston area. So um, on top of that, to let everybody know, Florida had a group of our team members ride in Florida yesterday to honor Texas line of duty death. Uh, Baton Rouge, as y'all know, Baton Rouge has a group and some of y'all are going to be there. Uh, they're riding tomorrow and honoring Texas line of duty deaths. We're riding today, Tuesday and Friday here in Houston. And then we're doing a Central Texas ride out of Seguin with Zach on next Sunday. So um, even though we can't do our normal ride, normal operations, which is the back-to-back, -back, multi day uh, unique ride because most you know, people think we're crazy for doing all those days back to back and straight. Um, we couldn't do that this year because all the concerns, but we're still able to do something. And that's that's what brings us all together. Uh, we all understand the brotherhood and that's, that's the big part about it, the big thing. So with all that being said, um, for the, any new riders, uh, just kind of fit in. This this route is it's a shorter day than what we normally would do. We ride single file, double, like I've said in the email, and normally we have a big long safety meeting over it, but today's gonna be kind of just fit in and go with everybody else. Uh, it's a it's a double pull line. If there's if there's too much traffic, and this will be explained in a lot more detail when y'all are riding, but if there's too much traffic, both of y'all pull off to the right, right? And it just kind of help the newer riders understand that. But pull off to the right. If there's no traffic, unless the guy's on the, on the actual, uh, ride and decide not to, 